children are born every day and start to grow up. They don't spend much time talking about how they were born or when they were a baby. Growing up, they worry about making friends, having fun, or dreaming of playing professional sports while being famous. I was one of those kids. Nobody can really prepare you, I don't think, for that strange feeling of being absolutely thrilled to have a son, but knowing that because of how premature, how early, and how little he was, that um, almost anything could happen. The more you do this, the more you learn that every baby really is their own person. They, you don't know their story. Reasons vary on why they're premature. Sometimes, but not always, it's a result of problems with prenatal care. The most common ailments preemies face are with their lungs. Ailments so serious that 10 years ago, preemies with lung problems faced just a 50-50 rate of survival. And of course, when babies that small are kept alive, you can imagine that many people raise ethical questions, first about the cost, much of which is paid by insurance, and about things like machines keeping these kids alive. We acknowledge that debate, but also feel comfortable pointing out the miracles we witnessed inside that unit. Do me a favor. Do us all a favor. <laughs> Save this tape, and let's go back and find those kids uh, three or four or five or ten years from now. Good point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe 24 years from now. I was born on October 21st, 1987, four months premature. For the first four months of my life, I lived at Children's Hospital in St. Paul, Minnesota. I weighed one pound, six ounces. We were very excited about um, having uh, a son. We knew you were going to be a boy. So we had picked out your name. We knew you were going to be named Jack, for instance. Um, we were very excited. We had big plans. We had just moved into a new house. Life was pretty sweet. Things were going very, very well. No one expected you to live because you were so small and so early. When you were born, you were 11 inches long, which is how tall a Barbie doll is. The emotions at that time were a true roller coaster. To even, even knowing how small and how early and how sick you were um, and how, how no one expected you to, to even live, let alone um, do well. You cried right after you were born. And that was a sign to the doctors and to your dad and to me that, um, that you had some lung capacity and that you were a fighter. You weren't gonna give up without, without trying. My life depended on technology and the doctors and nurses who took care of me. One of them, Dr. Mammal, still works at Children's Hospital. A lot of it is deciding that the battle should be fought and that you can win it. I'm a neonatologist, which means I'm a pediatrician who specializes in the care of uh, premature babies. When people change their belief systems, we started to change our outcomes. And it wasn't just that, you know, we have more medications, we have more technology, we, we have a more sophisticated system. In the 70s and 80s, it was uh, um, harder in some ways, in a lot of ways, we didn't have the technology we have. and we didn't have the outcomes we have today. So we had, we, certainly when I trained, when I started, we were still wrestling with survival. But we've now moved to a point, even with really tiny babies, where yes, survival is question one, but now our real focus is how do we improve their development, their, you know, their neurologic development, their, uh, how do we help them become just normal kids? Today's medical technologies make it all about helping preemies achieve a normal life. Back when I was a baby, the fight was about survival. Preemies, as early as I, really survived without complications. But somehow, even without the technologies of today, I survived. There are now fairly well documented cases of babies under 10 ounces um, that have survived. And we actually had our smallest survivor about two years ago who weighed 12 ounces at birth. You didn't have a lot of weight to lose, and all newborns lose weight, and you didn't have much to lose. We had lots of, um, lots of meetings with doctors. They were very, very honest with us about um, what, 
your challenges were going to be? It wasn't an easy road. I had five different surgeries that represented many different challenges during my stay at Children's Hospital. I needed heart surgery and test time surgeries twice, two hernia surgeries. However, my biggest challenge was with my lungs. I needed mechanical ventilation for two months on the respirator. And that, in a, in a premature baby um, who's as early as you were, that is, is, has the potential to be fatal because it's so serious. The type of ventilator or breathing machine, the type of technology that we use, really has also advanced. Pushing air in and out, now we have the technology to measure the quantity of air that goes in and out of the lungs and try to keep that to a specific uh, parameter or a specific volume which I think also helps babies in terms of long-term lung function. The first couple of weeks were really tough that you were, that you were alive. On the second day, they diagnosed you as having a very, very serious brain bleed, uh, cerebral hemorrhage. That at the time, they didn't, they didn't give us a prognosis because nobody knew. It was really hard to predict what might happen with you because you were beating all the odds for the smallest babies have to do with bleeding into the brain because that does tend to increase the chances of long-term problems like cerebral palsy or developmental delay, things like that. It can also lead to blindness, hearing loss, other sensory deficits. When I left the hospital, I was already four months old but weighed only five pounds, less than most newborn babies. My future was unknown, but because of my premature birth, my parents You know, their neurologic development, their, uh, how do we help them become just normal kids? When any child is born, they don't know what they're being born into. It can be a wonderful, the lap of luxury kind of existence, or it can be a struggle every day. You never know what the family is, is going to be. The kid doesn't know. The child doesn't know. You beat the odds in so many ways. And While growing up, I knew I was a little different from the other kid because of my hair. Despite that difference, I played soccer and baseball, took up golf and the guitar, like most boys my age, loved the movies and video games. I'm still involved in all those things. Over time, as I've heard the stories of my birth and developed more understanding of what they really mean, it's kind of strange. I've gradually come to understand not how special my situation is, but how normal I've become. The toys of my childhood become the foundation of my future.